celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Please stand and join me in singing number six four in today's book. Christ the Lord is risen today. Number six four in today's book.
in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of the resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Thank you. 
and, and it's receiving Jesus more fully into your life, okay? That's enough of catechesis. Now, you all celebrate Thanksgiving Day? Yes. When is Thanksgiving? November. November, that's right, November. All right? And what do you do on Thanksgiving Day? Eat. Eat, sure you eat. You eat alone? No. Okay, who do you eat with? Family, friends. How many tables do you have? <laughs> two. Okay. Why do you have two? It's the whole family there, right? You know, when I was a kid, we had a couple of tables. There was always an adult table and a children's table. Do you have that? Yes. Do you? Yeah. All right. Good. Now, guess what? Today, when you receive this communion, you're going to the adult table. <laughs> All right? Because that means you're going to eat with us. You know, from now we're all together at the same table, and it's the table of the Lord. And, and that's cause for great joy, isn't it? Sometimes it's okay to be away from the parents and do what you want, sort of, right? But sometimes it's nice to be all together. And that's what we're doing here. And also, we're giving thanks. We're giving thanks to God for coming to us and inviting us in fully into His life. The God who loves us says, Come to the table. Be fed by the bread of life. Okay, good enough? <laughs> Let me tell you about my first meeting. You know what day today is? What's the date? May 1st. May 1st, right? That's a day to remember. I remember my first communion, it was May 4th, 1963. You ever hear of 1963? <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I was in a downtown parish. It was the old Irish parish, okay? My grandparents went there, my parents, and I don't know, and on and on. And so, I didn't live in that parish, we lived in a suburb, sort of. But this is downtown, kind of rough parish. And uh, anyway, I received our first communion. And then after, we had a party. You gonna have a party after this? Yeah. All right, good. And at that party, my parents went home with my family, and I had to stay with the rest of the kids that I made first communion with. This was a real poor area of town. You know, the family's not, not really in good shape in many instances. And the Catholic girls' school, they brought us all up and made scrambled eggs and they had breakfast for us. And I didn't want to go. I didn't know these kids, and I hate eggs. <laughs> you know, and so I knew my family was home having a good time here and with not strangers, you know, acquaintances. But I didn't really know them. And I thought, how unfair that is. Eggs and people I don't know. <laughs> um, but when I look back upon it, I, I think it's really important because Eucharist, communion that we're going to receive, is about joining ourselves with people. Because when you receive Holy Communion, you're not only one with God and Jesus Christ, but you're one with all the people here. Every one of us. You want to stand up and look around at the faces here with the First Communion kids? Why don't you stand up? Stand up and look at the people around you. Look at the people in the church. Look back there. You want to get on the pew and look? Go ahead. <laughs> you go to school with any of those people? Do you go to school with anybody out there? Do you play games with anyone out there? <laughs> Probably not. <laughs> but by your receiving community, you are part of this community. These are your brothers and sisters. We've got a bigger family now, more tables. And that's really what it's about. And in retrospect, I discovered that. That, that. that being communion with God, it means also being one involved with all the people in this building. 
and beyond it, members of the body of Christ. And of course, that's a reminder to everyone out there is that we are one with these children. They're part of our body. And that we're, we're called to bear witness to the Lord in our lives and really to nurture them in faith, and especially families. That's really important because we're in dire need of people who witness to the love of Christ and to nurture them not only with bread on the table, but nurture them with love so that it mirrors the love of God that we celebrate here today. You think that's enough words? <laughs> yeah, she said, yeah. You guys too. How about everybody else? Enough? <laughs> okay, that's it. <laughs>
acceptable to God the Almighty Father. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. The Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but in this time above all to laud you yet, yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with Paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with angelic hosts sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. <laughs> Father, in the unity of the 
Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now, as a people of faith, let us stand with confidence and pray to our Heavenly Father as Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Thank you. 